So there we are. These are the drums that we just uh, composed um, as audio, uh, just on an audio channel in a fresh project. Uh, I'm just going to disengage again. My default project um, has a limiter on it. We don't need the oscilloscope here either. All right. So there we go. So these are the drums that we make. They're still not overly dramatically amazing, but we'll get there. Um, now, I want to resample this and slice this to MIDI track. That is something that is really, really powerful in Ableton. I find that to be a really cool thing. First of all, we're going to have a little look here and we have to warp it before it does that. Now you can see here the transient markers of the warping are automatically assigned and we can see that they're nicely put everywhere, you know, uh, where there is a transient moment and that there aren't any extra ones. And that's important because these are the points where the slicing algorithm will slice these drums down to. <clears throat> Now, when you right click, you can go uh, <clears throat> slice the new MIDI track. And when you do this, you get some options. You can sort of, you can choose the slicing, as I said, per transient marker. That's what I did. You can use warp markers, which are the orange ones that you put in yourself, or you could just uh, do it at straight, um, straight rhythms. In fact, in this case, you know, even though it set the transient markers itself, they are supposed to be dead on the eighths. So you might as well also use eight. And then you can use uh, slicing presets. Now, there is the built-in ones. Uh, and lots of different ones, but you can also essentially make your own, and that is great. Now, I'm going to slice it to the built-in one to, to show you, first of all, what it does. Now, here we are. Let's uh, mute the original one. We can see, first of all, that we have here, like, sort of drum computer-style steps. So we have here, all of these individual hits have now been assigned to a different key, and it just sort of put down the MIDI as well. So we just listen to it. We have something that closely resembles our drums. Um, and let's put it into a um, drum rack. Let's just uh, get all of it out there. And now we see here the different slices to map to different pads. And they just correspond to the next ones. They've all been pad for pad have been put into a simpler, which is cool for, for this kind of uh, stuff because it has all the proper functions and doesn't get too complicated, especially if, if you have to tweak a bunch of slices to have a normal sampler in there is also possible. You just have to navigate more pages. It can be slower. You've got some mixing and tuning options over here, and you've got some macro controls. And I think the macro controls and what type of instrument you load here are very specific to the to the slicing parameter you might use. Now, <clears throat> we can see that the attack, decay, sustain, and release of the amp are mapped macro for every slice. And that's quite handy because obviously if we wanted to now make the whole drums very tight, we can do that instantly, as you hear now, which is uh, which is a good thing. And obviously, if these microcontrols weren't there assigned to this, we would have to go in slice for slice and do it um, over here with the ADSR. The green dot here indicating that um, you are that they're mapped to macros also makes them unable to be moved individually. Now we've got start offset, loop length, uh, compression, and the crossfades. Uh, in here, but what I would, for instance, really miss is we cannot transpose all of them together. We could do that here, for instance. We could just take them all, um, select them all, and uh, just we can't even. Oops, sorry, wrong one. Um, so basically, we can't we can't transpose it. Um, now, if I am go to uh you know like i think transposing especially for a beat so we might want to pitch them up a little bit will give us a really cool effect um so let's have a look at you know doing a slicing preset like that now if i just start here midi channel i will go to the instruments sorry um so i've minimized all of this stuff now um, just to give you maximum view space uh, there we go so we'll get a drum rack up. Now, in this drum rack, totally empty as it is. For instance, if you are cool with a simpler, we just load in a simpler. Oh, sorry. There we are. I just missed it. So now we have a simpler on it. Um, and we could just map some macros here. First of all, now I think uh, attack uh, ADSR for the amp is a very good one. So we're going to map this to one. We're going to map this to two. We're going to map this to three, I'm going to map this to four. 
Now, I mean, you know, there's different parameters that you could do here, but I think one uh, that is just uh, really good. Well, let's focus on the filter and uh, the transposition. So this is a transposition. We will put that there. We will then um, go for a filter type, filter frequency, and filter resonance. Now, um, just double checking. We like we want to set our our uh, defaults properly here because otherwise every time it will come out wrong. Um, so now, first of all, the filter type LP12, low pass 12, uh, entirely open without uh, you know with minimal resonance. Um, transpose we want that to be at zero we probably want the attack down release and uh, decay and sustain open and the release maybe a tiny bit open good so now we will just save this um, we'll call this slice rack got it there now we take this preset we go into the user library uh, and to ooh, let me just double check we're going to our user library um, then we have to go to the map defaults and then we're going to go drop that preset into slicing so there was one that i've already done for myself but now slice track is here in slicing and this will now uh, enable us here to right click Oh, select the audio, right click. Uh, sorry, obviously I have. Here we are. Just clicked slightly too low. <clears throat> so here we go. Um, we can now slice to MIDI track. We will, you know, consider just a transient marker, should be fine. And we can now see here that slice rack is become a slicing preset. And now we have here a bunch of simplers loaded in with our default settings and default macro controls. Very powerful feature this, and it's very useful uh, to kind of control your drums. So here you go, you can hear, we can do some really cool pitching already. You can already hear as well, the pitching up these drums makes them really nice and snappy, maybe a bit more distinctive for my type of sound too. You know, we. We've got this very, very tightly controllable stuff now. This is also a great little trick to enhance, um, to enhance transients. Then, you know, we can obviously just, you know, filter this stuff. You know, this is obviously, it's, it takes different filter modes. Very powerful now. So this kind of slicing preset rack is something I would highly advise you to set up right away and just, you know, definitely something to use a lot. Now, I might kick, I might choose one of my drums here um, to be sort of the body. Let's say we like, we like the drums nicely attenuated at, at um, two notes up. We'll duplicate them as well. There are all sorts of things that you could do now to sort of make this more interesting. For instance, if we put like a layer on top with just the endings, we can just sort of, um, you know, put a little bit of different types of saturation on this. Just let's keep it simple, but uh, just quick to show you some variations of you know, so we can just sort of have some, we can really have some some interesting sort of top end going on. You might be able to put a little bit of, uh, of sort of reverb on this, something like that. Um, might, might really sort of brighten your stuff up from just clean and tight like this. You can also then give us like really sort of, uh, sorry, I am doing that in the wrong one. Uh, if we go to the sort of the original drums, you could tighten them up a little bit, make them punchy, make them really sort of the cutting kind of drums. And then we just sort of use this for the tail end. We can saturate this more. Another plugin that I find really cool is a standard simple plugin uh, that is sitting here. <clears throat> An audio instrument is called Erosion. It's just basically something that feeds uh, a little bit of white noise or other types of noise into, um, into sounds. And just solo it so you can really hear it. Now this sounds messy as it is, but you can see that sort of behind the drums, it really sort of fills them out. Um, also, you know, here now we've probably lost quite a lot of bottom end and uh, whatever because I've, sh I've shortened the tails and a lot of the sub weight is there, which means we could probably re eq them, get them to be poppy but a bit weightier. Uh, that's definitely something to do. And then one more thing that I'd like to show here as well, just for the drums is, 
we make one more copy and we just go what I was doing already super short now I've worked with, with Logic and Cubase um, you know as well I've never found a program that has such snappy and powerful um, envelopes as as uh, sort of the, the 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 envelopes in Ableton are I mean when you listen to this this is just pure click almost it's just incredibly good to use this over the top when you are coming to a fine like a you know a final stage of your tune one of the thing, pro big problems i think that most you know uh, sort of less experienced producers have is just to get that snap and that definition in your drums you know especially when you start limiting you do tend to you lose a lot of your attacks you know your transient moments now this is just an excellent way just to take your drums and layer over the top something that is nothing but attenuation so you know if we just sort of go down a little bit there, you know, you can really sort of hear the difference between this is just without and this is with. You just get that really snappy top end. It sounds a bit over the top at the moment, but when you get towards a final mix stage, these ticks over the top, you can just sort of start them out at zero and start bringing them in until you really start hitting a nice, you know, sort of snappy attenuation. This will allow you then to drive your master limiter just that bit harder and you just get a little bit closer again to allow the mix. So there you go. We went from FM sort of hard drums that we made from scratch with some very simple additional hi hat y kind of sounds, resampling and resampling. And now we have full control. You know, we can obviously re edit the drums any way we want. We've got the control with the slice preset as well. And, you know, working in this way, it's very controlled, it's clean, it's step by step. And essentially, I think the part processes like the kick, the snare, and even these, these sort of drum slicing, they're reusable. You just take a clip like this, you go to your user library, you know, you just want to use these drums again and again. You just go in clips, you give it a name, and then, you know, you are there. So, you know, in the future, you will just be in a project. You think, ah, those drums from that project are sounding pretty good. You'll just drag that clip back in here and instantly you'll have the whole signal chain that was there. Um, you know, uh, even if we would say add some effects after this now, which is obviously definitely still a possibility here, we could still process this more. You would have that all instantly at your fingertips. And when you start building up a great library of your own clips, very soon you'll start finding that your tunes will get better because so much of the essential but boring sound design work you've already done prepped well you'll keep bringing that back and you can focus more on the songwriting and less on the fm you know sound design so there we go that is my uh, part about beats so um, after this, I'd like to obviously go a little bit more in depth about FM because I've been using it, I've been talking about it, and I do understand that a lot of people find it a little bit confusing. So we're going to start from the beginning, we're going to show you what it is, we're going to make some cool bases with it, some interesting textures, we're going to resample that, and then we are going to finally look at some more mixing techniques, final mixing, bussing, um, and that would be coming towards a full... Um, approach of how I like to make music in Ableton. <laughs> 